just welcome everyone here to the uh, live stream on Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. We hope you're all doing well in the quarantine. We thank each of you for joining us live. If you're joining us live and those of you who will watch later, we thank you for joining us later. If you hear me clearing my throat or coughing a little bit, it's allergy season. Some of you can uh, relate to that. So I apologize for that in advance. But let's get right into the Word. We're going to turn in your Bibles, if you have them, to Luke 24. Luke 24. Just a beautiful day. I hope some of you guys got to see John's sunrise service at his house. And uh, if not, check that out on John Leister's page. And uh, the sun's just popping out. The birds are chirping. It's just all giving God praise. It's beautiful. So Luke 24, I'll give you another second to get there. We're going to be looking at most of this chapter, so hang with me. But uh, it's important to get the overall picture of what happened on Sunday a long time ago. Luke 24. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened to bow their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day, rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about 70 miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? As they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem that does not know these things that have happened in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who would redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since these things have happened. Moreover, some of the women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning when they did not find his body. They came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with them went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he was going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, oh, no, Stay with us, for it's, it's toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened the to us the scriptures and they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together saying the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon 
Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and they thought that they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do, you have, why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it's I myself. Touch and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it before them. And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, The Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses to these things. And behold, I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Let's pray. Lord, you are risen. And we thank you so much, Lord, for forgiveness of sins that we have in you. For the hope that we have that we will rise again in the resurrection. That we get to come to you in heaven when we have our final breath, Lord. Lord, please help me today, help them today to just learn more about you, to apply it to our lives, and to just give you praise and glory, Lord. And if anyone doesn't know you today, that they would know you by the end of today. We just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Their hero had come. They'd been waiting for him for thousands of years, and he was finally here. The excitement, the anticipation, the joy was spreading like wildfire. He was healing people. He was preaching the good news to the poor and the needy. And he was raising the dead. The Messiah was finally here. And things were looking great until one day things took a drastic turn. One of his closest friends betrayed him and turned him into the governing authorities. His crime? Claiming to be the son of God, the king, the Messiah. His punishment? Death. His other friends, scared, worried, devastated. And the government condemned him to death. The long-awaited one, the long-hoped-for one, the one who never did anything wrong, who never sinned ever, would suffer the torturous death reserved for the vilest of people, the cross. And at the cross, some of his friends stood by watching their hopes and their dreams pass away with every fleeting breath. Jesus was taken from them so soon and it seemed all their hopes were gone. Until three days later, the tomb was empty. Sights of angels and the body missing started to circulate. Where was he, they wondered. Did, did someone steal his body? Could he be alive? And then the people started seeing him. He started appearing to people in different places. Could it be? Is he really alive? Is he really resurrected? You see, Jesus died but everybody dies. The question is, would he be raised? Raised from the dead. Because if he wasn't raised from the dead, our hope in him, it's all a sham. And today we're going to be looking at the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to see what it meant for those so close to him who struggled to believe. And we're going to see what it means for you and for me who often struggle to believe as well. And we're going to look at this in three main ways. We're going to look at Jesus was foretold. We're going to look at unbelief and go tell the nations. Jesus was foretold, unbelief, and go tell the nations. The first thing I want us to see is that Jesus was foretold. What happened to him was predicted before it ever happened. Now the first place I see this in this passage is in verses 6 and 7. But before we get there, let's, let's set the scene here. Jesus was put to death on a Friday, put to death on the cross. They put him in the tomb and they put a large stone in front of it. 
And now it's Sunday, and Luke tells us that Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, with other women, go to the tomb. They take spices to put on Jesus' body, showing that they expect to find the body of Jesus, not somebody alive. And when they get there, they see the stones rolled away. And verse 4 says, they're perplexed. If you can imagine that, someone they love so much was murdered. They're going to take spices for his body, and then they see... This to- this, the stones rolled away to his grave. It's opened. Did someone go in? Did someone he come out? They're probably looking at each other going, what's going on? And to make matters even more wild, verse 4 says that while they were perplexed, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel or shining garments. Or another translation says their clothes gleamed like lightning. Now, a bad thunderstorm just hit our house this past week, and maybe it hit some of your houses too. And Ashley wakes me up saying, we got to get up. we got to get the kids in the, in the hallway. And she was right. So we got in the hallway, and we had the kids in there, and, and uh, the lightning was, was going, and thunder crashing, and just, it, the dog was going wild. And then I heard the one hit really close, and the, our Internet went down. Our modem broke, and, and I thought, man. And then as we were in the hallway, I could look out towards the window, and the dog had move the uh, curtains away. In the dark of night, the lightning hit and it just blinded me. It was just like a temporarily, boom. I was just dazed and seeing stuff. And that's what these men's clothes were like. They were bright, startling, and awesome. And when it says that this, it doesn't mean that they were in Jerusalem at a fashion store and just purchased some really shiny clothes. It indicates that they were from heaven come down, that they were otherly, that they were angels. John 20, 12 confirms this when speaking of the same event when it says, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the hand and one at the feet. Okay, so the scene's set here. And who would be freaking out at this point? I probably would if I was there. The entrance to where my friend's body is supposed to be is opened. There's angels with this bright clothing like lightning in front of me. And then it says the women get down on their faces in front of these angels. And to make matters worse or more crazy, then the angels start to talk to them in verse 5. And what do they say? Why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you when he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise. The angels say, Don't you remember? He told you this. He had to die, and then he would rise. How'd you forget something this huge? Maybe it just slipped your mind. It's completely understandable, right? No, they should have known this would happen. You know why? One reason they should have known is because Jesus himself told them it would happen. Jesus predicted his own death and resurrection before it occurred. In Luke 9.22, he does this, where he says... Jesus says, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. He says it again in Luke 18, 32 through 33. He says this, speaking of himself, for he will be delivered over to the Gentiles and will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him. And on the third day, he will rise. Jesus told his disciples multiple times this would happen, that he would be put to death, and in three days he would rise from the dead. So we see Jesus told his disciples this face to face, but he wasn't the only one that told his disciples that this would occur. The scriptures the disciples had at the time, what we now have in the Old Testament, foretold that this would occur. Foretold it way before it occurred. And Jesus himself told his disciples that very thing. To see this, let's look first at the encounter with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. So the women, they were speaking to the angel, they were speaking to the angels at a tomb. That was the first account. And then shortly after this, there's two guys walking on the road to a place called Emmaus. And Jesus shows up. And verse 16 says, But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. So Jesus shows up, but supernaturally, somehow, they don't know it's him. They just think it's some guy. And, and Jesus says, Hey. What what are you guys talking about? And they say, oh, man, 
this Jesus, you know, he, we thought he was this and that and he was great, and, but they put him to death and basically he failed his mission and, and Jesus rebukes their unbelief and then he says this, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures, in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Jesus could have said that. Jesus, didn't he tell you this was going to happen? But he doesn't. He instead concentrates on what was written about him, foretelling this event from hundreds and thousands of years before. And he also said, Jesus, in Luke 24, 44, later in the chapter, that the Psalms also foretold his coming. But what does Luke mean here when he says that they, Jesus explained the Scripture, starting with Moses and the prophets and, and the Psalms? When he talks about Moses... It's the first five books of Moses, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis through Deuteronomy. When he talks about the prophets, he's talking about several books, including Judges, Samuel, Kings, Isaiah, and several others. And then the Psalms are, of course, the Psalms. Luke says Jesus went to the Scriptures to show them he was foretold to come, to die, and to rise again. Psalm 16.10 and others all predict in shadows the resurrection. And many other scriptures predict different aspects of his coming and his dying, his rising. And I want to look at one of these briefly. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is one of my favorites. And this was written 600 to 700 years before Jesus ever came. And as I read parts of it, I want you that are listening to see if it sounds like Jesus, to see if it sounds like what he went through. Isaiah 53, let's pick up in verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds... We are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief when he makes his soul an offering for guilt. He shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. Hundreds of years before Jesus was ever born, Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 53, what seems to me to look like an eyewitness account of the cross. It's incredible. Do you see it? Do you see that Jesus was foretold to come from a long, long time ago? Do you see that Jesus himself predicted that he would die and rise from the dead? Do you see it? There are many more examples of this in the Old Testament. The idea here is that Jesus was foretold to come way before he ever did. He was foretold in the scriptures that were written before him which we now have in the Old Testament, he was foretold his, he foretold his own death and resurrection.